Welcome, I'm Jay Taylor, editor of Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks, also the host of a radio show called Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm here with Dr. Quentin Henning. Uh, he's here today to give us an update on Goliath Resources, uh, the drill program that they've just started, and they pulled the first couple of holes ever from their project. The, um, this is a gold digger project, and the Sherbet Zone is the target that they're uh, focused on right now. And uh, last year they had some really very exciting results, uh, early stage surface results. Um, they uh, tracked down a uh, fairly wide mineralized zone, uh, grading, oh, I don't know, 10 grams or so per ton over five to 15 meters of width and uh, traced that for a thousand, uh, for a thousand meters. Uh, a long strike and 500 meters uh, vertical extent. So it's a, to start with, very exciting story. And they put their first couple of holes down. They just reported uh, on those holes, the visual observations. We do not yet have assays. We'll be eagerly waiting for them. But uh, we have Quentin uh, here today to help us understand uh, what those visual observations might mean going forward. So thanks for joining me, Quentin. Oh, always, Jay. It's great. Yeah, so uh, talk to us. I think July 12th uh, reported 57 meters of quartz sulfide mineralization. Uh, July 19th, 23 meters of the same style of mineralization. Uh, what do you what do you know so far uh, based on what you've seen and observed? Yeah, look, the, the, I'm going to give people a little refresher about the, the target because it's actually a pretty remarkable target. You know, um, we were seeing diminishing snowpack in some of the higher mountain ranges up in BC in recent years. And I think this discovery, I think mainly could be attributed to that because mm -hmm. uh, the, the outcrops that they sampled initially were up towards the top of the mountain uh, along a shear zone, basically a, a 40 degree dipping shear zone. So it's a, a planter feature. Uh, it's about 10, 15 meters wide, like you said, or at least that's what they saw at surface. surface yeah. And, and this thing, as the snow melted, they saw more and more of it, and they were able to channel sample this thing uh, over a strike of about a kilometer. It's uh, it's remarkable because the mountain goes straight up and then goes straight back down, and it's just like you know, it's you can trace this thing even on Google Earth. You can see it now. You can see this thing goes up, and then it goes over the top of the mountain, and it goes back down the other side. So it's really a three dimensional target. Like you can, you know, as a geologist, it's pretty encouraging to see. Uh, so much strike length exposed on something like this. So what they're doing right now is they, they've set up drill pads uh, to test a long strike. So they're going to work their way up the mountain and, and maybe down the other side a bit. And they're going to have drill platforms from which they drill fan holes because it is steep terrain. It's easier to drill multiple holes off of each pad than try to set up a new pad for every hole. Uh, you know, you, you can go to their website and see some of the, the <laughs> drill stations they have there. It's like clinging to a, the side of a cliff in, in some cases. Um, anyway, they started in the south. They're going to work their way northward. And the first two holes in the south here have returned very nice widths of visible mineralization. And this is a very visual system. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the main higher grade part of the, the shear zone is quartz sulfide veining. It's often brecciated, meaning it's broken up into fragments because the structure was probably moving while the mineralization was forming. And my hunch is that kind of stirred things up, but it's really, it's a really distinct type of rock. You can see the, the quartz and the sulfides and uh, the gold and silver come along with those. We know very, very well from the surface sampling that was done, the gold and the silver are closely associated with the sulfide. So uh, what do we see? The first two holes, there's some really nice, you know, 10 plus meter intercepts of that quartz sulfide veining, but within broader zones of, of stockwork veining, there's stockwork sulfides. And that's something they didn't quite understand when they did the channel sampling, you know, because of the, the terrain, uh, the really steep terrain, they were able to focus just on certain areas of the high grade and they didn't have the latitude to, to kind of go out from there and see what the grade was doing around it. But I think, I think they're going to see some, like that first hole, 57 meters of mineralized rock. There should be a, a nice surprise in there. Any idea when we might get that surprise? How yeah, look, the, worth coming? Yeah, yeah, the assay, the, the samples are going to be rushed. Uh, this time of the season, the front end of the season, the cues in the lab aren't 
quite so bad yet. Okay, so the the samples are being split and then shipped to, uh, they're gonna go straight to Vancouver mm -hmm. and they will be prepped and advanced as quick as possible. So I'd say within the, uh, you know two to four weeks, something like that. Believe it or not, that is fast. That is fast it, these days. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna promise that kind of turnaround uh, henceforth because yeah. when it gets busy, it's just plain busy. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Well, and so you've alluded to the geometry then it looks like, uh, you say you say you're seeing wide widths. It seems as though the mineralized structure. You've done enough drilling to sort of discern the mineral uh, the, uh, the the geometry of this thing. I mean, yeah. you know from surface uh, yeah. that it, you know the brittle you can see a lot. But so yeah. so you're pretty confident that the mineralized structure will maintain those kind of widths that you. I see? I'm very optimistic. I you know the channel samples that were taken at surface they're over a very long strike length. And they're very consistent. And I've talked to the young geologists uh, that, that did that work last year, you know, these young bucks who got up on the side of that mountain and, and were able to saw, they literally sawed, you know, channels down sure. the, the width of these vein, this uh, shear, and uh, sample this thing. And I'm quite confident in their, their judgment. They showed me a lot of pictures, showed me views where you can see uh, like a long strike, you can see up and down and see that the rock is fairly consistently mineralized. So. Uh, I'm very optimistic that kind of continuity will persist down dip uh, as they drill this thing. Look, the first series of holes are shallow. They're going to be drilling uh, about 50 to 100 meters down dip from the outcrop. So think of it like little fans of holes testing a long strike. And then later in the year, they'll set up some holes a bit deeper that will test maybe 500 meters down dip. Okay. And then I'm pushing the company, I'm pushing them to drill at least one, maybe two holes, even further down dip. Because if you think about the geometries, we can already see a kilometer strike, okay? To me, uh, it should be logical that the thing continues at least a kilometer down dip, okay? So I don't think it's a far, you know, it's not a, a stretch to say, yes, this thing could actually uh, persist. And, and the other thing we see now, we see a, an intru a likely intrusive off to the west or southwest. Oh. There's a magnetic feature out there that's it's a deeper feature, but it is probably the the source, you know, the beater source for this mineralization. Yeah. So as we chase this thing down dip, I, I actually have a hunch that it could get better. So I noticed in your uh, the last news release, uh, you started at the southern end of this uh, structure, but, but the, yes. from what you can see, although I think under there's some talus underneath a bit to further to the south. You figure That's it's right. all open at the south, but you're going to work your way north. I think you just said, yes, uh, up, up the up the mountain and then perhaps down the other side. Uh, what so? What are the plans and objectives of this year's drill program? Then, what do you hope to achieve? I guess you kind well, of told us that. Yeah, look, it's it. It would be nice to say, oh, you can come up with a resource here. Oh no, no, look, it's this is the first season. I would say that would be a stretch. What this really is, I'm going to call it a definitive test of the target. Okay, uh, the holes along strike that are just 50 to 100 meters down dip from surface, that will give us a clear picture of the continuity is there along along the strike. Mm -hmm. if, if we see that continuity, tick. That's a good answer. The, the next series of holes, the ones that test four or 500 meters down dip, those will start to tell us if there's continuity down dip, if this thing persists. If those hit, tick, another, you know, very good sign. Okay, if we see those holes hit, then I want to drill one about 1,000 meters, basically straight down the dip of this thing, about 1,000 meters. If we hit there, you can then start to prognosticate about what the size of this thing is, okay? You can say, okay, hmm, it's about maybe 10 meters thick, it's got about a kilometer strike and it's got about a kilometer down dip and here's your mountain. You can start to imagine what the, the potential target size might be. And I think by the end of this season, we will be able to tell the market, yes, this thing has potential to be, you know, of X size. We don't know what that number is yet. Well, well, I do yeah. know that uh, you're known for your philosophy of uh, go big or go home. So you yep. must have a sense uh, that this has a potential at least to be very significant in size. You know that you mentioned it's on, uh, yeah, if you look at the, uh, go to the website and look at those drill pads, the way they're built on the side of a mountain, uh, unbelievable. And I noticed there's a big red cross on the on the building next to the drill pad. What What is that for? For the helicopters or something? I mean, they, they no, they have, uh, 
they have a medical response, yeah. you know, equipment and, sure. and a medic sure. available sure. Uh, at the project. So that's really in case anybody gets hurt, a driller gets hurt or something. Sure. Uh, so, certain, yeah. So, so it's very rugged terrain. How long does it take to set up? And I mean, can we expect how soon after you've moved the drill pad, the next uh, drilling might take place? Yeah, look, they're, they're drill, they've built a lot of these pads. They've got several of them. And what they'll do is as they finish one, you know, say down low, they'll dismantle it and then use that material to drill, uh, to build the next one up the hill. So they kind of leapfrog up and over. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take the full season here. I mean, it, basically the company's going to be drilling from now until late September, early October, something like that. And snow start to fall and the, yeah. it's really rigid. Yeah. So you maybe to the south and next year, that's probably not something you get to a southern to the southern south of where you're drilling now. Yeah, that's probably let, for the let me let me tell people what's going on to the south. So as you come down the mountain and, and you get to the, the southernmost exposure, you know, of the of the structure, the Sherbet structure, uh, the as anybody you know, if you have ever been to the mountains, you know that there's this kind of what we call scree or talus. Sure. This is loose rock. It's simply fallen down the mountain and it accumulates along the base of the mountain. It's like an apron. Okay. And this apron of loose rock kind of covers up the sherbet zone uh, as you come down the hill. Uh, we we're very confident and it's still there. It would be very shocking to say something that's a kilometer long, all of a sudden just disappears as soon as it hits the talus slope. I think it'll be there. It is going to be a little more uh, challenging to explore that area because you, you know, you can't build, stuff on loose rock and stuff it's a little dangerous but if we prove this thing a long strike we'll get we'll figure it out engineering wise we'll figure something out to test that regime all right, all right very good well is the company well funded uh yes they are they're well funded for this program they have actually more than enough money if you recall eric Sprott came in i think in march or april uh and helped top, top up the treasury so right now they have enough money actually to drill quite a few more meters than they have planned all right. So just uh, wrapping up, then we should be looking, I guess, for drill results. They could come pretty quickly. Those first couple of holes, the uh, first couple of holes, maybe two to four weeks. Let's hope, you know, touch wood uh, that again, I can't promise yeah. let it turn around after that. But, yeah. but anyway, uh, what you're seeing, you're, you're, you're seeing the, the right kind of mineralization in those intercepts that you talked about, I guess, very similar to what you saw on surface. So the reason, real reason to be optimistic, and I should mention, I don't think I did when we started this conversation. This is a company with a market cap. It's quite small yet, $55 million Canadian market cap, you know, only 49 million shares out. So this is another thing that's got me very excited about this story. And uh, I must admit, I picked up a few shares this morning. Again, uh, I really love the story. Quentin, thank you so much for sharing it with us and helping us uh, lay people to understand uh, the potential here. It's, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Anytime, Jake. Anytime. You bet.